Well, with the uh, world super middleweight champion, Eugene Eckelboom, of course, you Fox Sports viewers would have seen Eugene a number of times on your screens. Eugene, you've made the trip evolution, big occasion, taking on one of Australia's best, John Wayne Parr. It's going to be an interesting affair. What have you got in, uh, in plan for John Wayne Parr? Um, that's right. It's going to be a great fight, um, something I've been looking forward to for a long time. I watched Wayne Parr, when I, before I started Muay Thai, I watched Wayne Parr fight 10 years ago and I thought, imagine doing that and here I am today fighting him. So it's a great honour, but at the same time, I've got to beat him and I know I'm ready and um, it's going to be a cracker. That ovation can only mean one thing. The young slinger, the six-time world champion, gunning for title number seven. John Wayne Parr again in the house in the main event at Evolution. In his 105th fight, he's done it all in the world of Muay Thai. He's cleaned out the middleweight division, now he steps up to the super mids and challenges for Eugene Eckleboom's title. Over the top ropes once more, Australia's favourite fighting son, John Wayne Parr. WMC Super Middleweight World Champion Eugene Boom Boom Echo Boom from Riddler's Gym in Perth makes his way to the ring. First time ever main event on Evolution. His 61st fight record of 52 7 and 1. What a moment here for Echo Boom. Not often that the champion comes in as the underdog, but it's certainly that way here tonight. He has $2.70 for the win on fightbet.com. Wayne Power at $1.40. Out back earlier on, a little bit of nerves surrounding Eugene Eckleboom. You've got to wonder what's going through his mind, taking on such an accomplished opponent. As Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get it on for the main event of the night. For the WMC World Super Middleweight title. The challenger fighting out of the right corner, having stepped into the ring 104 times. He's come out victorious 75 times. He is six times world champion, Queensland's favourite son, John Wayne Park. His opponent, fighting out of the blue corner, hailing from Western Australia and fighting out of the Riddler's gym. 60 fights for 52 wins. He is the current WMC World Champion, Eugene Boo Eugene, in my mind, has to be careful not to look at John Wayne Parr as, as being, I suppose, his hero or being someone that um, he's seen as a legend and be intimidated by that. He's got to get in there and go, this is my title. No one's taking it. I don't care if it's a champion of the world or, or anyone. He's got to really go in there and say, this is mine. I'm keeping it. No one's taking it from me. Not one man, not 10 men. It's mine and it's staying there. He's got to really get that angry mindset to it all because Wayne Pass is going to take something that belongs to him. It is always a very special feeling the moments before a John Wayne Parr world title fight. He's got six belts to his credit. Can he make it number seven? And can he make it his first in the super middleweight division? Here we go. The fight all of Australia has been talking about. John Wayne Parr, Eugene Eckleby. Wayne Parr looking very relaxed as always. Looking very comfortable at this size. And here we go, the world title on the line. Michael Chevallo and the former Australian champion Mark Castanini with you. This fight brought to you by our major sponsor, Gumdale Demolition. Big, uh, big thank you to Tricky Trev and Gumdale Demolition. Might have a couple more jobs for you, Trev. A couple of houses on a bowl over, mate. Body shot outside, thigh kick from Wayne Park. Eugene Nickelboom, who is incredible in the grapple. His main strength lies in the clinch. Wayne Parr, we know the prowess of his striking. Great leg kicks, excellent hands. 
Wayne who said he wants to start aggressively, wants to pounce on Eugene, wants to put an early finish on the night. Eugene just seeing what Parr has to offer here. Parr looking to curl that overhand right early on. Eugene, as the hammer said earlier, could not afford to show Parr too much respect here. Eugene's going to realise that he's the champion. And it's all for Wayne to do to try and win this bout. Well, Eugene did say, Michael, to me that he was going to fight his fight and uh, still look to get into that clinch range, tie up. We know how tough Eugene is. Seriously, he's taken some big, big punches and uh, stood up to him, elbows the whole lot. Um, a champion bloke and a, and a tough fighter to boot, Eugene Eckleboom. But uh, tonight he's up against uh, one of the best in the world, indeed, John Wayne Parr, right here in his backyard in Queensland. So uh, the task ahead of him is somewhat daunting. Parr just dipping his toes in the proverbial water here, seeing what Eugene has to offer. As he said he would, actually. He said he was just going to feel his way and uh, make a plan from there. Checks the low kick well. Have all the rafters packed out here at Chamber Arena. Capacity crowd, one of the biggest we've ever seen. Evolution 20's main event. Evolution just going from strength to strength. And uh, Wayne Parr acquiring a new, uh, a new sponsor, someone who uh, does asset location quest in Viro. So uh, check him out, QEST in Viro. Wayne Parr just battling off the ropes, moves it back to centre ring, looks to set the right hand here to Parr. It's good to see some of these big companies just getting behind the fighters. You know why? Because they love the sport. It's a company from Melbourne, but they've flown all their staff down to uh, support Wayne. Oh, spills in front of our commentary position here to Parr. We are reconnected as our screen momentarily and our microphones went out. Just took us out. <laughs> I'm partaking everyone out in the stadium, including us now. <laughs> High round kick from Park. As the filling up process continues. Eckleboom, good body kick. And saying to Park, you want to try and match strength with me at my weight? End of the first round, we go to the towers. Hammer, how did you see it? Well, after uh, Wayne Parr nearly landed in my lap, um, I seen it as a, as a good even round. Wayne Parr pushing uh, the pace, trying to find the right range to uh, initiate his attacks against Eugene. And uh, Eugene, in turn, probably starting a little quicker than uh, he, normally, he normally does. So uh, a good even first round. Once again, you see Eugene just uh, looking to get his range in also. JW, there's the body kick getting caught by Eugene and shot. We tried to shoot on that low kick, and uh, Wayne uh, nearly landing. He nearly become a guest commentator of his own fight. Second round of our main event set for five WMC super middleweight strap on the line. Eugene Eckleboom defending against John Wayne Park. And you can see Park come forward with a little more aggression to kick off this second stanza. Eugene goes downstairs, kicks out that lead leg. He's a very heavy kicker, is Eugene Eckleboom. He is, but you look at his legs and they don't look... Have a look at the size of the thighs of John Wayne Parr and have a look at Eugene's thighs. Parr definitely has a, a lot more muscle mass there and uh, develops some good power in his kicks. So Eugene, uh, long, tall, rangy fighter that uh, develops the power through his speed and, uh, and hip rotation. Trading some leg kicks early on as Eugene just returns the favour. Parr looking through his brow, jab overhand right. Eugene now gets a chance to tie him up. And we'll see the strength of the clinches. Parr puts on the knee guard. And referee the Murph breaks both men. Eugene edges forward. Moves in for that grapple once more. Wants to tie him up. Lock him down. Put him in the web. So many opponents have fallen victim to that spider's web grapple of Eugene. Eckleboom gets clipped the short left hand to the nose. Ah, sets the right, goes to the jawline. Eugene ties him up, knee to the hamstring area. Trying to pull the head down. Once again, Parr riding the ropes, puts on the knee guard. Absolutely hanging off Eugene. Just a clever wear down tactic from uh, John Wayne Parr. And uh, placing all his weight onto Eugene as he gets into that clinch. And just hanging off him and making him carry his weight. 
You can hear Darren Reese saying knee, knee, but Wayne very effective at putting on that knee guard and allowing Eugene to throw the knees in the grapple so far. Checks the low kick. In front of our commentary position again. Oh, Eugene wore a right hand to the temple, rallies back, throws a leg up to the liver section. Wayne starting to find the range now with those power salvos off the hands. Huge steps in, uses a knee, wants to pull the head down into the meet and greet, the big bok choy. Haven't seen any elbows really coming to play as of yet. I'd like to see uh, Wayne Parr just moving around a lot more. He's still, he's still staying in front of Eugene quite a lot which is uh, leaving himself isolated as a target for the clinch and grapple. Hammer, what do you think of the tactic here of Wayne? Every time Eugene comes in for the grapple, Wayne doesn't look to throw him in an of his own. As soon as he comes in, he automatically puts on the knee guard. He, he puts on the knee guard, goes into lockdown position, um, and just basically places all of his weight onto the body of Eugene to, uh, to wear him down and, and fatigue his legs and fatigue his shoulders in, uh, in making him carry that weight. But Eugene is fighting a smart fight as well, and I tell you what, he was very low-key out back, almost a bit intimidated, but he's certainly uh, not looking at intimidated at all in centre ring as the action is uh, unfolding before us. And it was John Wayne Pudge, just uh, as Eugene looked to get in the clinch and affect those knees. JW, just especially against the ropes, hung on, knee guard across, taking both flies out of action of Eugene, putting all of his weight onto him and just hanging down and uh, making the work affect the break back to center ring as i said i'd like to see jw just drifting off a bit to the side and uh, letting his hands fly a bit more because when he throws his hands they're very very effective indeed third round of this wmc super middleweight championship match it's been a fairly even fight so far michael chevello mark castanini with you eugene comes out round kicking wayne goes to the lead leg eugene just tags with that left Oh, Wayne kills the overhand left. Eugene steps in and see automatically. Wayne rides the ropes, rides Eugene, puts on a knee guard. Wayne is not willing to exchange in the grapple. He knows that Eugene is the stronger probably in the grapple at this weight. But Wayne will tend to dictate when it comes to striking. We will see how this is balancing out on the judges' scorecards. Well, for any fighters that are, are wanting to uh, look at how to handle a strong grappler, have a look at what uh, John Wayne Parr is doing in this fight. He's totally negating any uh, heavy clinching engagements. Look at that, bombing with the hands. Exactly what he's got to do, Michael. Wayne tags him momentarily, and you saw Eugene, the champ, get flustered and move in for what he knows best, the grapple. Good leg kick there. Eugene again trying to force Wayne against the ropes so he can lock him up. Wayne front kick right hand and Eugene backtracks. A little bit of swelling under the left eye here of Eugene Eckleby, the champion. Drives Wayne back over the rope. And aren't we loving this? All the aggression in this fight is right in front of our commentary position in the quarter of the ring. These guys almost going to commentate their own fight soon if they get any closer to us. Eugene trying to get the knees off once more, but Wayne puts on the knee guard. It is just very clever tactics here from Parr, who is cut over his left eye. Eugene also has the a... The uh, is cut. Eugene also has a fairly, fairly serious welt over his left eye, or under his left eye, rather. So that uh, no doubt was going to impair his vision. All tied up again. In the corner, screaming for the knee from Eugene Eckleburn, but he just can't find the opening because of the very cerebral tactics here of Wayne Park. Well, it's a war. We're halfway through it. And, uh, geez, they're, uh, they're leaving absolutely no nothing in the ring, these two, Michael. Absolutely nothing. Up a gut elbow oh, from well, Eugene well, in well, the clinch. If the knees aren't working, Maybe it's time for Hughes to go with the elbows. Echo 
friend who for a long time has been one of Australia's most underrated world champions. A lot of people tended to write him off in the lead up to this contest. They said that Wayne would be too fast, too strong with his hands. That Wayne would be very powerful at this rate, rather than at this weight, rather than usually having to strip so drastically to make 72 kilos. As Darren Reese goes to work on the cut under the eye there, the swelling under the left eye of Eugene. Over in the corner, they ice down the cut on the eyelid of Wayne Park. Well, what you're seeing, folks, is uh, two warriors going to war. Going to absolute war, leaving nothing in the ring for this one. World title action happening. Let's have a look at that, how it went down in the third. John Wayne Park, clever tactics from him, locking on the knee guard, clinching up to the ropes and affecting a break to take the fight back into his comfort zone, which is, of course, uh, the striking range, rather than the clinching range against such a, uh, an accomplished grappler stand-up grapple as uh, Eugene Eckleburn and it is a real game of strategy happening right before us. The penultimate round of action number four of five. It is still wide open here and we see the scars of war. Just a premature start to that round and they forgot the mouth guard here of Eugene Eckleburn. <laughs> Can you get it on? There's a cut over the left eye on the eye lead of Wayne Park. There is a massive welt under the left eye of the champion Eugene Eckleburn. Park comes forward, tries to land the hands. Eugene's very awkward, he's a very spoiling fighter. Yeah, and I've got to say, Michael, this has got to be in all the fights I've seen. Eugene has certainly, Wayne Park's brought out his best. This is one of his uh, best performances, I'd have to say, that uh, we've commentated, and uh, he's right on his A game, Eugene Eckleburn here. Wayne just rushing in with that overhand right leg kick. There's the right hand to the jaw, missed the target. All tied up, the Murph gives him a bit of a slap and a tickle. How are the judges scoring this one? That is the big question here. Are they appreciating the attempts of the grapple of Eugene Eckleboom and working a few knees and an attempted elbow in the previous round? Or are they appreciating the outside work of Wayne Parr and the striking? Well, in, the, in applying the grapple and uh, holding the clinch, that's going to score well for Eugene because he is uh, appearing to be the more aggressive of the two in, under the, under the Thai style rules, which is, of course, stand up clinching. Wayne is uh, not engaging the clinch, instead locking down. So depending on the judge's mindset, that could play a part, certainly, in the scoring. It's almost uh, like, I suppose, in MMA, where you have a fighter attempting to, sh attempting to shoot or getting a shoot and taking uh, his opponent da down. It doesn't have to be a super-duper super, a super duper, uh, uh, technique, but the fact that he's trying it, attempting it against the fighter that's not, sometimes scores. And Wayne put through the ropes again momentarily. Well, it does depend also on if the judges are paying the fact that Okay, Eugene is lucky on the clinch, but he's not really getting any effective strikes off True. while he's in the clinch. And you bring it back to that mixed martial arts analogy again, Hammer. I know from over in Japanese, they don't score the takedown per se, they score what happens after the takedown that makes the takedown effective. And so what are the judges looking for here? That's the big question, we don't know. Well, perhaps when Eugene uh, gets into that clinch, he wants to just start working those short knees. Rather than trying to get the knees up to the body, the head just start to uh, bang away at the thigh. Maybe look for the elbows, Hammer. Maybe look to try and sure. sweep up the support leg that Wayne's resting on and get a takedown. JW is, uh, is just fighting such a smart fight. You see the knee guard again, again straight away. Locking down and also holding uh, holding the other the other leg back physically with his hand. So uh, totally taking Eugene's game out of play is John Wayne Parr. Again, the knee guard from Wayne Park. Wayne wants no part of the grappling. Eckleboom wants it all grappling. That's where he's most comfortable. That's boom, boom, lane. Well, he really needs to change his strategy because it's just been totally negated, certainly in that round. That said, though, Hammer, also, Wayne Parr isn't going to win any points by possibly locking on a knee guard. Sure, but it's a defensive fight that he's fighting. 
uh, in the clinch is just putting uh, a pure defensive plan into play and uh, spoiling Eugene. So what we've got is basically a stalemate in the clinch and at range, while well, there's, uh, there's limited uh, opportunity at range with both fighters are just locking into that clinch pretty much constantly. A close fight nevertheless. It's going to the fifth and final round. And but there is also something to be said in a championship match, I believe, is that to win the title, you have to beat the champion. You have to take the title. Exactly. You have to physically go in there, grab it, and wrestle it away from the champion. That effectively, I suppose, hasn't happened, Michael, up to this point anyway. I, I don't agree. So I see a pretty much an even contest. I, I'd say this is a drawn contest at the moment. We are at that... Uh, that stagnant arm stalemate. wrestle. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a stalemate. It's a stagnant arm wrestle. It's just there waiting for one fighter to tip it the other way. And so that's a good point, Hammer. We now have three minutes in which both corners have got to be saying to their man, it is time to throw down. It is time to take this one by the scroat and claim it as your own. <laughs> Rip it off. <laughs> so you're exactly right. Three minutes that will change destiny forever. Potentially ahead of us. Let's see how the next three minutes pans out. Wayne Parr needs to wrench that title away from Eugene Eckleburn. We've got it a dead even fight so far. Wherever you're watching on Fox Sports, we hope you're enjoying all the action. Nothing in it so far here in the third. Eugene moves in for a grapple. Wayne works the hands. Okay, we're inside the clinch, and once again, Wayne puts on the knee guard. Eugene gets out of it, puts the knee guard on again, does Wayne. And once more, we are a stalemate. Wayne's corner applauding him for shutting down the grapple attempt, and he storms forward again with the hands and puts on the knee guard in the clinch. Rides the ropes. Knee to the midsection from a Eugene. And again, but not really effective. Such a close fight, it's almost uh, again a carbon copy of the Chad Walker Danny Didowski fight where it was down to the last round, to the last fight, to the last technique effectively almost. It may just take one telling blow, one minuscule opening. Again you see Parr with the knee guard, a little sneaky uppercut elbow there from Eugene. I'm Surprised we haven't seen more elbow shots. Eugene's hands are a little worryingly low here as the fatigue begins to creep in on the champion. There's the elbow I was after. That'll score for it. Wayne tries to throw one back. Eugene just shoots up the hands and Wayne gets out of dodge with some fancy footwork. Eugene puts on the grapple again. Knee to the lower lumbar region, doubles up on it. Some effective knee there from Eugene. This is a good final round, I feel, from Eugene as Wayne misses with the crushing elbow. It's interesting when Wayne puts that knee guard, he really gets that leg up and across, and I'm, uh, I'm a bit, uh, while well, I call for Eugene to be grabbing that leg, scooping it up and potentially looking at uh, taking, taking uh, Wayne's balance by grabbing the leg. Instead, he's gone the waist clinch. The leg's out there for the grabbing from Eugene if he can grab it and uh, sweep out the supporting leg. Spinning back Whoa. elbow from Wayne, trying to steal it. Not happening for him. Wayne throwing a rare knee in the clinch. Still anyone's fight. There is now a cut over the right eye, it looks like, of Eugene Nickelboot. It's not going to matter because at this stage of the fight, it's all or nothing. Boom comes forward again and you see Wayne puts on the knee guard not allowing any knees to be thrown here by the champ certainly the judges we've got to wonder what they're scoring they're scoring the grappling attempts here by Eugene it's Eugene constantly coming forward and locking on the grapple and there it is into the fifth and final okay Hammer let's take a look at it here wow. in my opinion I would say probably a good idea as a drawn contest, or maybe I'd go the way slightly of Eugene Eckleburn. I don't believe that Wayne did enough no. to be crowned the champion and to take that title off Eugene. It's down to like, if you're looking at a boxing contest, for example, one fighter just covers, places his hands up to his head, and the other fighter's hitting the guard. Okay, well, what are you going to score there? The fighter that's covering and effectively negating all the strikes, or the man that's on the outside wailing in with the punches and working the uh, for an effective shot? Okay, David Eller, we're about to announce the decision here. Please give us for two guys, Eugene Eckleburn and John Wayne Carr.
an absolute battle inside the ring here tonight at Evolution 20 the Legacy as we go to the judges' scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a draw. Oh, a drawn contest. Well, Hammer, I hinted at it. I hinted it could be a draw. Yeah, yeah there was absolutely nothing is it, no. in it, as we called. And I don't see why the section of the crowd booing here. I know we want to get a result, but I would say a draw, a very fair decision. If not, I would have slightly leaned in the way of Eugene yeah. Eckleboom. Wayne, yeah. the way that I look at it the best, though, Hammer, if I'm going to sum it up, is that Wayne Parr did not do enough to take that title from Eugene Eckleboom.